Welcome back to our channel. I'm Lisa. And I'm Eric. We'll explore new words, share engaging dialogues, and chat about everyday language use. So sit back, relax, and let's get wordy. Okay, Eric, let's get started with today's words. What are the words today, Eric? Okay, Lisa, the first word today is particular. Then we will continue with on purpose, to encourage, then to ignore. And the final one is to get up. Great. Okay, Eric, can you start with the first word? The first word today is particular. 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 It means something that is specific or special. For example, if you like a particular kind of music, it means you like a specific type that is special to you. I see. So if I say I want a particular book from the library, it means I want a specific one? That's right, Lisa. Now let's listen to a dialogue using the word particular. Excuse me, I'm looking for a particular dress I saw in your online store. Sure, can you describe the dress for me? It's a long red evening gown with a lace trim. Ah, I know the one. You're talking about. It's a very particular dress and we only have one left in stock. Let me show you where it is. In this dialogue, the customer is looking for a specific unique dress that she saw online. Yes, and the salesperson understands that it's a particular dress because it's different from the others and there's only one left. Lisa, have you ever searched for a particular item like the customer in the dialogue? Yes, I once spent weeks looking for a particular pair of shoes I saw in a magazine. I finally found them in a small boutique store. That's very interesting. It shows that when you have something specific in mind, you will try to find it. Exactly. And you feel happy when you find it because it's what you're particularly looking for. What about you, Eric? Have you ever looked for something particular? Yes, once I was looking for a special record for my collection. It took me months to find it, but it was worth it. That's so cool. It's amazing how much effort we make to find something if it's particular to us. Absolutely. So Lisa, how else might someone use the word particular in a sentence? You could say she wanted a particular type of cactus or I need a particular ingredient for this dish. Those are great examples. They show that particular can be used to describe something specific or special that you need or want. Okay, let's move on to our next word. What is the next word, Eric? The next word is on purpose. On purpose. On purpose. On purpose means doing something intentionally, not by accident. When you do something on purpose, you do it because you want to. For example, if you say, I didn't break the vase on purpose, it means it was an accident and not something you wanted to do. That's right. Now, let's have a sample dialogue using the phrase on purpose. John, did you push Sarah on purpose? No, Miss Smith. I accidentally pushed her when I was walking to my desk, not on purpose. Okay, I understand. Please be more careful next time. It's okay, Miss Smith. I know. John didn't do it on purpose. In this dialogue, the teacher asks John, if he has pushed Sarah on purpose. Yes, and John explains that it was an accident and not something he did on purpose. It's important to understand the difference between doing something on purpose and doing it by accident. Definitely. When you do something on purpose, you know what you're doing. Lisa, have you ever done something on purpose that you felt bad about? Yes, when I was younger, I once said, something bad to my friend on purpose because I was angry. I felt bad about it. And later, I apologized. I think we've all done things on purpose that we wish we regret. It's important to think before we say or do something that can be misunderstood. I agree. What about you, Eric? Have you ever done something on purpose that had a positive outcome? Yes, I once surprised my mom 
by cleaning the whole house on purpose while she was out. She was so happy when she came home. That's so sweet. Doing something nice for someone on purpose could help them a lot. Okay, well, I think that covers the phrase on purpose pretty well. I agree. Thanks for the great discussion, Lisa. You're welcome, Eric. Let's explain the next word. Okay, Lisa. The next word is to encourage. To encourage. To encourage. To encourage means to give someone support, confidence, or hope. When you encourage someone, you help them feel better about themselves or a situation. For example, if your friend is nervous about a test, you might encourage them by saying, You've studied hard. I believe in you. You can do this. Exactly. Encouraging someone can make a big difference. Now, let's have a sample dialogue using the word encourage. How was the presentation, Rosa? Well, I was very nervous about speaking in front of everyone at the beginning. Then, my teacher said, You've worked really hard on your presentation, haven't you? I believe in you. You know this topic well. So did she encourage you? Yes, she did. I went there and shared what I know very well. In this dialogue, the teacher encourages the student because she is very nervous. Yes, the teacher gives the students support and confidence to keep trying and not give up. To encourage someone can be really powerful, especially when someone is having a difficult time. Lisa, have you ever encouraged someone who needed you? Yes, my little sister was trying to do her math homework once, and I encouraged her to keep practicing and not give up. And she got a good grade on her test. That's wonderful. Has anyone ever encouraged you when you needed it? Yes, when I was learning to ride a bike, my dad encouraged me and helped me believe in myself. He gave me the confidence to keep trying until I finally learned how to ride. That's a great example. To encourage someone is a powerful tool that we can use to help others. I couldn't agree more. So Eric, can you give more examples of how to use the word encourage in a sentence? You could say, I want to encourage my friend to follow her dreams. Or, the teacher has encouraged the student to do better in class. Those are excellent examples. I hope our listeners understand what to encourage means and how to use it in a sentence. Exactly. Well, I think we've covered the word encourage quite well. Now, let's move on to the next word. Okay, Eric, can you explain the next word? The next word is to ignore. To ignore. To ignore. It means not paying attention to someone or something on purpose. So if my friend is talking to me and I don't listen, am I ignoring her? Yes, that's right. It's not a nice thing to do. Now. Let's hear a dialogue using to ignore. Hey, John. Did you hear what I said? Sorry, Sarah. I ignored you because I was trying to study for my exam. Oh, I understand. I didn't realize you were studying. Thanks for understanding, Sarah. I didn't mean to be rude by ignoring you. In this dialogue, John ignores Sarah because he focuses on studying for his exam. Yes, and Sarah understands why John is ignoring her, and doesn't take it personally. It's important to remember that ignoring someone can sometimes be rude, even if it's what you want to do. You made a good point, Eric. It is always better to communicate rather than ignore someone and let them know if you need to focus on something else. I agree. Lisa, have you ever been in a situation where you had to ignore something or someone? Yes, when I was studying for a big test, I had to ignore my phone notifications so I could concentrate. It was hard, but it helped me focus. That's a great example of when ignoring something can be helpful. What about being ignored? Has anyone ever ignored you, Lisa? Sure. Once I was in a group and I tried to share my idea, but everyone ignored me. I didn't feel good. What did you do then? I waited for the right moment and tried again. This time, they listened and they liked my idea. Good for you, Lisa. And how should we react when someone ignores us? 
We should stay calm and try to find out why. Maybe they are busy or didn't hear us. That's a good approach. It's better to understand the situation before being upset. Exactly. And our listeners remember, it's important to listen to others. Don't ignore your friends or family. Your attention is important to them. Exactly. I think we've talked about the word ignore enough. Let's explain our last word. The last word is to get up. To get up. To get up. To get up means to rise from a sitting or lying position. It's the opposite of sitting down or lying down. For example, when you wake up in the morning, you get out of bed to start your day. That's right. We get up every day, usually after sleeping or resting. Now, let's have a sample dialogue using the phrase to get up. John, it's time to get up. You'll be late for school. Okay, mom. Just five more minutes, please. No, John, you need to get up now. Breakfast is ready and you don't want to miss the bus. All right, I'm getting up. Thanks for waking me, mom. In this dialogue, John's mom is telling him to get up because he needs to get ready for school. Yes, and he knows he needs to get up and start his day. Getting up can be challenging sometimes, especially if you're tired or not feeling well. That's true, but it's important to get up and start the day, even if it's difficult. Definitely. So, Lisa, how else might someone use the phrase to get up in a sentence? You could say, I need to get up early tomorrow for a meeting, or my grandma needs help to get up from her chair. Those are excellent examples. They show how to get up can be used in different contexts, whether it's waking up in the morning or standing up from a seated position. Exactly. Well, I think we've covered the phrase to get up quite well. I agree. Thanks for the helpful discussion, Lisa. You're welcome, Eric. It was nice to explain the words to our listeners with you. We hope you've enjoyed today's episode and learned something new along the way. Keep practicing, stay curious, and remember to join us again for more words. Until next time, this is Lisa and Eric saying goodbye. Happy learning. Bye-bye. Hi there. I am Lisa. And I am Eric. Hey, everyone. We're here to make English simple and fun for you. Today, we're talking about some words you hear a lot. That's right, Lisa. So, sit tight, relax, and let's dive into our words together. Okay, Eric, what are the words today? Okay, Lisa. The first word today is to bother. Then, we will continue with to be scared. According to. Then, to try on. And the final one is to eat like a horse. Let's move on to our first word. What is the first word, Eric? The first word is to bother. That's a common word. Absolutely, Lisa. To bother means to make an effort to do something, often when it might be easier not to. It can also mean to cause someone to feel troubled, worried, or upset. Could you give us an example dialogue, Eric? Sure. Let's say you have a friend who's feeling sick and you want to check on them. You might say, I hope I'm not bothering you but I just wanted to see how you're feeling. Oh, I see. In this case, bothering means making someone's life harder or more annoying. Exactly. And in another scenario, let's say, you have a lot of work to do, but your noisy neighbors are having a party. You might say, their loud music really bothers me when I'm trying to concentrate. So in that situation, bother means to annoy or disturb someone? Right on, Lisa. Do you think there are situations where bother can have a positive meaning? Hmm, good question. Well, what if you're at a party and you see someone sitting alone? You might go over and say, I hope I'm not bothering you, but would you like to join us? In that case, bothering means making an effort to include someone or another example. He didn't even bother to say goodbye. Uh, I see. So. To bother can also mean to show concern or care for someone. Exactly. It's all about context. So let's look at our examples of dialogue. We will see the two meanings of to bother. Did Emily ever call you back about the party? No. She didn't bother to call me back. I guess she must be very angry. What's wrong, Emily? 
You look upset. It's nothing. Just this message from my ex. It really bothers me that they keep contacting me. Well, they were useful examples. I hope our listeners have understood what to bother means. I agree, Lisa. Remember, listeners, don't hesitate to bother us with any questions you have. We're here to help you learn. Okay, let's move on to the next word. The next word is to be scared. To be scared. To be scared. It's spelled S-C-A-R-E-N-D. S-C-A-R-E-D. Ah, to be scared. That's a common phrase, isn't it? Absolutely, Lisa. To be scared means to feel frightened or afraid about something. Can you give us an example of how to use this phrase? Sure. Let's say Sarah was scared when she saw the big dog. Oh, no. There's a big dog over there. Don't worry, Sarah. He looks friendly. I know, but I'm still scared. It's okay, let's walk on the other side of the park. That was a great example, Eric. So in the dialogue, Sarah was scared because of the big dog, right? Exactly, Lisa. She felt frightened or afraid when she saw the big dog. Is it common for people to feel scared of dogs? Well, some people might feel scared of dogs if they had a bad experience with them in the past or if the dog is really big. That makes sense. So, Eric, have you ever been scared of something unusual? Hmm, let me think. Oh, yes. I remember one time I was scared of a spider in my room. Really? Even though spiders are very small? Yeah, I know they're small, but they look scary with all those legs. I can understand that. Spiders can be quite scary. Well, it's good to know that we can use to be scared to talk about feeling frightened or afraid in different situations. Absolutely, Lisa. It's a useful phrase to know in English. And don't let being scared of making mistakes stop you from learning English or anything new. Making mistakes is a part of the learning English journey. Okay, let's move on to the next word. The next word is try on. Try on. Try on. It's spelled T-R-Y-N-O-N. Can you explain what it means, Eric? Exactly, Lisa. To try on means to wear clothes or shoes to see if they fit or if you like how they look on you. Can you give us an example of how to use this phrase? Of course. Let's say, I'm going to try on this dress to see if it fits. Which one should I buy? Why don't you try them on and see which one looks better? Good idea. I'll try on the red one first. Great. I'll wait here. That was a clear example, Eric. So, in the dialogue, Jenny could not decide which dress to buy, correct? That's correct, Lisa. Liam offered her to try on both dresses to see which one fit her best. Is it common for people to try on clothes before buying them? Yes, Lisa. It's very common, especially when shopping for clothes. Trying on clothes helps you make sure they fit well and look good on you before you decide to buy them. That makes sense. So, Eric, have you ever tried on something and then decided not to buy it? Oh, definitely, Lisa. There have been times when I tried on a shirt or pants and then realized they didn't fit me properly or it didn't look as good as I expected. I see. It's important to try on clothes before making a purchase to avoid any regrets later. Absolutely. Trying on clothes is a helpful way to make sure you're happy with your purchase. Well, it looks like we've learned another useful phrasal verb. To try on is important when shopping for clothes to make sure they fit and look good. That's right, Lisa. And don't forget to try on clothes before buying them. Okay, let's move on to our next word. The next word is according to... According to... According to... It's a phrase we use when we want to say that something is stated by someone or found in a particular source. For example, If I read a fact in a book, I can say, According to this book, elephants are the largest land animals. That's a clear explanation, Eric. Shall we try an example dialogue using according to? Yes, Lisa. It's coming. According to the textbook, the Earth revolves around the sun. That's correct, Mark. 
According to scientists, that's how our solar system works. So in the dialogue, Mark used according to to show where the information in the textbook came from, right? Exactly, Lisa. He was referring to the textbook as the source of information about how the Earth and the Sun interact. Is according to used only for information from books or experts? Not necessarily, Lisa. You can use according to for information from various sources, like articles, websites, or even people's opinions. For example, according to reviews, the best restaurant in town is Italian. Ah, so you're showing people's opinions about the best restaurant. Exactly. I'm sharing what people believe about the best restaurant in town. Well, it seems like according to is a useful phrase for sharing information or opinions from different sources. Absolutely, Lisa. It helps us give credit to where the information or opinion comes from. By the way, have you ever corrected someone who used according to incorrectly, Lisa? Yes, once my friend said according to me, but I explained that it was wrong. We use according to for other sources and third parties, not ourselves. That's a good point, Lisa. We use I think or I believe to express our opinions. If we get information or opinions from a third party, we can use according to. So, as you said, we cannot use it according to you or me. Thank you for this important detail, Eric. Let's move on to our last word. Okay, Lisa. Our last word is to eat like a horse. This is an idiom that means someone eats a lot of food or has a big appetite. For example, you might say, my brother eats like a horse. He can finish a whole pizza by himself. Yes, it's a way to describe someone who eats a large amount of food, just like a horse, which is known for eating a lot. Here's a sample dialogue using the idiom to eat like a horse. Wow, look at Alex go. He's already on his third hamburger. Yeah, he really eats like a horse. I don't know where he puts it all. I guess he must have a high metabolism or something. Either that or he's actually a horse. That was a fun example. In this dialogue, Sarah and David watch their friend Alex, who is eating a lot of food at the picnic. They use the idiom to eat like a horse to describe Alex's big appetite and comment on how much he's eating. Sarah suggests that Alex might have a high metabolism, which could explain why he can eat so much without gaining weight. David jokes that Alex may actually be a horse in disguise, playing on the literal meaning of the idiom. Eric, do you know anyone who eats like a horse? Actually, I do. My uncle always amazes me with how much he can eat at family dinners. Really? What's the most you've ever seen him eat? One time, he ate a whole turkey by himself. I couldn't believe it. Wow, that's impressive. I don't think I could ever eat that much in one sitting. By the way, remember, listeners, it's best to use this phrase with close friends or family. This is a funny way to make a joke about someone's big stomach. Good advice. Remember, to eat like a horse is just a playful expression about eating a lot. Try using it in a friendly situation. It adds a bit of fun to the conversation. Yes, it's a fun way to talk about someone's eating habits. And if you do happen to eat like a horse sometimes, just make sure you're not doing it all the time or you might end up feeling a bit uncomfortable. Good point, Eric. Balance is key, even for those with big appetites. Well, that wraps up today's episode of our podcast. We hope you enjoyed learning about the phrase to eat like a horse and how to use it in everyday conversations. Don't forget to practice using these words and phrases in your own English conversations. The more you use them, the more natural your English will become. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, feel free to reach out to us. We always love hearing from our listeners. Thanks again for tuning in. Until next time, keep learning and keep smiling. Bye for now. See you in the next episode. Bye-bye.